Hi, welcome to the introduction to access control. I am Liz von der Heiden. Access control is the ability to permit or deny the subject access to an object. A subject is an active entity such as an individual or a process. And an object is a passive entity such as a system or a file. For example, you as a user accesses a file in a computer. Access control system provides three essential services, authentication, authorization, and accountability. Let's first discuss authentication. Authentication is any process by which you verify that someone is who they claim they are. Authentication determines who can log on to a system. Authenticators are commonly based on at least one of the following three factors. Type 1 is something you know. These are your username and passwords. This assumes that only the owner of the account knows the password needed to access the account. Type 1s are very simple and inexpensive. That is why they are the commonly implemented authenticators today. Of course, passwords can be shared and stolen and otherwise compromised. That is why they are the weakest forms of authentication. Type 2 is something you have. These are based on physical objects such as smart cards or tokens. This assumes that only the owner of the account has the necessary smart card or token needed to unlock the account. They are not susceptible to duplication and more secure than type 1s. They are more expensive than the type 1 authenticators. Type 3 is something you are. This is based on bodily characteristics such as fingerprint, retina, or voice. And since these characteristics are unique only to you, they are very accurate. However, they are the most expensive and difficult to implement. For those of you who are studying for this CISSP exam, you have to be familiar with the two-factor authentication. This means that you would use, or use either a type 1 or a type 2 authentication. Uh, for example, when you go to the bank, you have your ATM card, a type 2. And then afterwards, you would type in your PIN number, which is, would be a type 1. And if any of these authenticators are not present, then an authentication will not take place. In some security procedures, they require a three-factor authentication, meaning you have to have those three types of authentication. Uh, so you would use a PIN number and a token, and you would use in conjunction uh, would be your fingerprint or your voice. Okay, the second security service is the authorization. Uh, for those of you who are studying for your CISSP exam, you have to remember that authorization precedes authentication. So after a system authenticates the user, authorization de determines what the subject can do to an object. Most modern operating systems define sets of permission of three basic types of access. Read, write, and execute. For the read access, the subject can read the contents of the file. And for the write access, the subject can change the contents of a file. So either the subject can add, create, delete, or rename the file. And for the execute access, the subject can cause the program to run. Write permissions could also be uh, based on the need-to-know system. 
It ensures that only authorized individuals gain access to information necessary, necessary to do their jobs. So if your job requires you to have access to secret information, then you would require to have a secret security clearance. And under authorization, it's also called the least privilege principle. The idea is that the least amount of people have access to the authorized system, then the less likely the system would be compromised. The third security service would be accountability. This is the ability to associate users and processes with their actions. It's what the subject did. Accountability could also be called an audit trail. An audit trail is a chronological record of system activities and logs. So the logs would, be associ would associate a subject to its actions. Audit trails could also be used to detect security violations, as well as to recreate security incidents. In conclusion, access control systems provide three essential services of authentication. Authentication means who can log in. And this, after the authentication, then you would know the authorization of what the subject can do. So it serves as a map on where the subject can and cannot go. And the last one would be accountability. The information would map the actions of the subject to the object. This concludes the introduction to access control. Thank you very much.